ladies and gentlemen. If you are listening to this right now, asking yourself, what do the questions of the universe hold? Then, then we, we must, must sadly, sadly tell you, you, we got nothing. We Got Nothing is brought to you by Halal Food Cart. Picture this scenario, folks. You finally recover your bag from Penn Station after three panic-induced hours, and you miss your train and are stranded in the Bronx for about two days, and you're hungry. Halal Food Cart provides authentic urban street cuisine at an affordable price. Located at 238th Street, Halal immerses you deep into city culture by being underneath the Bronx subway stop across the street from the famous Riverdale Diner and only a block away from Van Cortlandt Park. Halal offers everything from burgers to sausage and peppers to unique dishes like spiced lamb over yellow rice. For big time foodies or stranded patrons, Halal will provide your street dining and major metropolitan atmospheric needs. Halal Food Cart, where the street has taste. And greetings and salutations, my psychedelic children, my beautiful souls, and welcome to the Expo on the Art of Conversation, We Got Nothing. I am your host, who is a whore for French toast, Catalyst Jost, Coming at you from the beautiful sunshine wasteland of Central Florida, being joined today by a pimp named Skimpback, the host of the Schwann Game Stream, the spicy Adam Skimpy Amadova! <laughs> I think that was probably one of the best intros I've ever had. Yeah, 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 man. Uh, God damn. So, uh, what is it? It's about like, uh, what, what is it, 94 where I'm at. How's it going over there in the Adirondack region? Oh, man. Uh, it's not that, that hot. Uh, I'll probably nine. If I was where you're at right now, I'll be either in the water or inside of the AC costume. No, no. It's not, it's not too bad. No, not facts. It's like you're, uh, you're drenching in pure sweat down here. You could probably make an entire, like, uh, gallon of it and uh, people would think it's seawater. <laughs> What have you been doing for games as of late? I've been back and forth with a lot of things. Like, no, no, yeah, I was like, oh, it's Call of Duty, Fortnite, Apex. I've been going on uh, Fallout again, too. I love the Fallout game. Fallout 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fallout 4, I like in the modern day. It, it is like, uh, kind of like Skyrim, like, especially when you add the modding community with it. There's just so much you can do and customize with it. Like, uh, you can make it survival, you can make it horror, and you can really fuck with stuff like the, um, like the guns and the foliage and just the immersion of it all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Pretty much can turn into a whole different game. I kind of like that. I like I've been, I've been stuck back into another one. Now, uh, tell me, um, with, um, you, you just, you got the, uh, Xbox, uh, what is it? The Series S not too long ago. Uh, how's that, um, how's that been going out? Uh, to be honest, I miss the PlayStation. You know, I really do miss the PlayStation a lot. Um, I like the box. I like the box. But it's just, it's just not the same feeling wise, you know? The box has no memory space for me until I get a terabyte. It's going to be kind of weird. Oh, um, oh yeah, I think you can get, like, um, the external terabyte uh, over at um, GameStop there, or maybe even, uh, what do you call it there, uh, Staples. But I think either way, it's going to cost, like, uh, I don't know, 20 some yeah. some odd. And it's just like, really? I saw a good one over at uh, Level Up that's down uh, downtown near Clinton. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw it up there that I was going to not, but I ended up not getting it because I got the Xbox. I was like, you know what, let me just run with this for a while, see how it goes. I did fall in love with the box. I've always been a box shit talker, as you want to say. I've always been on the other side of the wars. After having both consoles, though, I, I can say I, I'm, I'm neutral now. You know, I love both consoles for, for their own different things, so I do love the box. I've been liking it. Consensus from most uh, audience members who be listening, uh, I think it's pretty safe to say everyone likes uh, playing with the box, if not most. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, <laughs> uh, after I got it, I was like, ah, oh, shiny. 
Got him. So, so you have your own like uh, game streaming like uh, YouTube channel. Can you tell me more about the how the Schwan is and how that works? Yes, I do. So uh, the Schwan is kind of like my, uh, I guess you could say my alter ego or something. You know what I'm saying? It's my little character I have. Uh, that's what I usually use to stream with. Oops, sorry, my earbud fell out. But uh, yeah, I stream under uh, It's the Schwan. You can catch that on YouTube or Twitch. When I do stream on Twitch, I try to now that I have the box. Uh, ever since I've been using the box, I haven't been able to record a lot of the same content I've been recording. I usually do a lot of the uh, party party chat stuff, you know, where you can hear me and the homies, because, like, you know, our dialogue is it's hilarious. So I usually start posting stuff like that, but since I got the box and I don't have a capture card right now, it's kind of harder to get that kind of content. So I've been kind of delayed and I've been kind of slacking. I haven't posted in, like, a few months, and I, I think that's terrible. But I've been trying to stream more instead of doing the YouTube since I kind of can't do the YouTube and do the editing on the videos that I usually do. So I've been trying to stream a lot more, but uh, you can still catch the videos. My old videos are still fucking good. They're still funny, you know. Where, where, where can um, where can you catch the uh, stream over on Twitch or something like that? Yeah, yeah, I stream over on Twitch. I stream on Insta Swan, the same thing as as it is everywhere. Uh, yeah, I stream on Insta Swan. You can catch my Instagram. I usually post it on my Instagram whenever I post on uh, either YouTube or go live on Twitch. I usually try to post it and stuff, but no. I try to do what I can and now with the equipment that I have because I don't really have that much equipment, so I do what I can with what I have. Well, even with, like, uh, cheap equipment nowadays, like, the cheap equipment nowadays is, like, what, like, uh, I don't know, maybe, like, five or so years ago was, like, top-notch back then. So, like, yeah. it's not hard to really make quality with, uh, like, l very few tools. But um, it, here's my question, though. Uh, now, what yeah. are the biggest challenges when it comes to like not only game streaming but like also compiling the uh, the footage together to post it on YouTube and capturing those moments, you know. There's a uh, there's a lot of I, I would say hurdles I guess that you have to go over. Uh, personally, for me, it was the whole uh, just getting comfortable with the content and posting it, not really being so much of a self critic to it. You know. Kind of just liking liking your creation, liking your own creation. You know what I mean? Because I, I, I've seen a lot of things, and it, it's happened to me personally, where I will make the thing, I will make the content, and then I will watch it too much or something. Mm. And I will kind of see these little things, these bits and there's that I feel like other people won't like and other people won't uh, want to watch. But, you know, that's kind of not true. That's just me and my personal feeling about it. That's just me being my own critic to it. But then when I actually post it out and not care about it, I get the positive feedback back. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's did this in the first place, you know? Right. So that's one of the big hurdles for me was just, just posting it, just getting the content out there, just, you know, liking what you're making, be comfortable with what you're editing with if you're doing your own editing, and just getting it out there, getting your content out there, you know? Is there a specific software you use to, like, uh, edit the videos when you were doing YouTube more or anything like that, or a specific <laughs> method? Everything was on my phone. I did every single thing on my really? phone. Really? That's kind of why I... Uh, yeah, that's kind of why I was proud of what I was doing, um, and that's kind of why I never stopped doing it regardless, because I was proud of how I was able to do what I was doing just from a phone and not having a software. So to me, it was like, imagine if I did have a software to actually do the things I really wanted to do, it would be a lot better. So I, I kind of just take what I have now because it's still a great content to me, and I still like it, I personally love it. So I still, I still get comfortable using what I use, which is literally just my phone. I use iMovies. Mm. And I just take all my all my clips I get. On the uh, <laughs> on the PlayStation, it's kind of a process. I had to, you know, put everything onto my YouTube privately and then take it from my YouTube and then download to my phone that way. Okay, um, so there was... So it was a lot more uh, complicated when it came with the uh, PlayStation as opposed to the Xbox. Yeah. Yes, with the actually getting the clips and getting the content a lot more process to do um but i liked it better that way because i got the voice chat and i got everything else that i needed from the playstation and now that i'm on the box it's easier to get the clips but i'm not getting the content that i want because there's no voice chat and stuff like that without the capture card so it's definitely a lot of difference <laughs> right it's a little complicated for me 
But I'm still I'm still rolling with the punches and I'm doing what I gotta do, you know. I haven't posted anything, I haven't even edited a video in a while because it's just been hard to just game and get the clips without just having fun gaming as well. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh now the name the Schwan and uh, tying it to this alter ego of yours you uh, apply to when you stream and whatnot. Where did the inspiration of not just the name but like uh, the whole uh, personality come from? Um, I, I guess I just came from because uh, like I mean the Swan is not that far from me like from my actual personality you know what I'm saying it's not really far off. So I guess the the name came first and. Uh, we were kind of sitting there, it was me and my brother, and we were kind of sitting there thinking of, uh, of names and niches that I can use and we can use to, for, for my gaming thing. And I was in love with Szechuan Sauce, I'm in love with Rick and Morty and, and Szechuan and stuff like that. So for some reason, like, Schwan came into my head. And I was like, Schwan? He's like, Schwan? Like, like, a, like, a, like a bird? And I was like, no, not Schwan. <laughs> <laughs> like the bird. <laughs> And also because enemy parties beware, the Schwan brings the kick, if you get what I say. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It brings the zest in there. So I'm like, you know what? I like it. I'm going to keep it. And we're going to run with it. And ever since then, it was just, it's been the Schwan for my gaming stuff. And I, I love it. I love the name. It's the Schwan. It's just, it's now, um, with, when it comes to future streams and uh, like, or, or even posting future uh, content on there, what do you see I I in the foreseeable future when it comes to the content? I, I see a lot. Uh, I see a lot more. That's that's my thing. That's the one thing I want to get out there for sure. I see a lot more. It might seem like I uh, stopped for a while, and it seems like I did, because like I said, the contest is a little harder to create. But uh, when I do come back, I'm going to come back a lot stronger. I'm going to come back a lot harder. I'm not going to stop this time. I'm going to keep posting every few weeks. Every, and whenever I can do it, I'm going to record. I'm going to edit. And even if it's just highlight clips or something, uh, I'm going to get it out there for my streams. My streams are going to get a lot better. I'm going to try to get more people in my streams, more funnier people, more, more good vibe heads in my streams as well. You know what I'm saying? To get the people rolling in there. Um, I want to start doing vlogs, so get ready for the vlogs, because mm. I noticed that the lifestyle I live is kind of extravagant sometimes, it kind of gets a little extra. And no, I, I feel that. Like document that more. You know what I mean? Uh, right, from... I, I want to be able to Right. For me, where I find like uh, struggle keeping up uh, with content is that like um, I go hard for like uh, months at a time with uh, some of the uh, some of the poems and the writings and the uh, of course the podcast seasons. And then I, this is on me, but like sometimes I do I get burnt out and usually during those burnout periods, that's when I'm relaxing and whatnot or catching up on something like like some of the new Marvel stuff that's came out recently. Like, oh, yeah, I know, right? Uh, let, let's take a moment on that for a second. Like, oh my God. Like, this year has been crazy when it has come to, to the MCU content and whatnot. I, I, mean, I mean, what is it? You, at the beginning of the year, you had... You had Moon Knight there, which, you know, out of all the Marvel shows I've seen so far, like, that's brought the, yeah, one of the trippiest, like. That's my, that's my favorite. I like how they did that with the whole personality things and stuff like that. I, I really like the way they did that. I really did. I got, I got caught into it. Yeah, no, I, I, really I, I didn't read any of the comic books, but, like, the, the dynamic between Mark and Steven and, uh. Mm -hmm. And just like what is it, Kanshu there, the spirit there, the spirit boy there. I'm just like, uh, it, it, it's such like a, it's kind of like a family dynamic if you think about it. And with 
I mean, the first episode alone, you're like, oh, what's about to happen right now? And then you see the, what is it? The Anubis, like, soldier there, the, like, uh, yeah. the Egyptian werewolf there. He he goes in the bathroom looking to kick Mark's, uh, not Mark, Steve, I get them confused, all of them, looking to devour <laughs> Steven, and then he's trying to get out of there and fucking, who is it? I, Mark just, like, beats the up for loving shit out of him. Yeah, 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 no, uh, what is it, um, Steven is very much the brain, while, uh, Mark is definitely the brawn. Khonshu is, like, the devil on your shoulder incarnate, he, like, god, he's like, oh. I don't know, I, I'm still still right now, after watching, I still don't know if I fully like him or hate him. Oh, really? I mean, uh, I mean, oh, oh, yeah, because of the ending there, yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? I think he's one of those situations where, like, because the, the character itself has such charisma and does have layers to him, that you can't help but be gravitated towards him and what he does. And then he, and, and then he pulls some fuck shit, like, towards the end there, you know? Yeah, it's like you play games and watch certain movies you start to like the villains, it's like, why? Why do I, why do I like the villains, you know? Kind of feels like that. Well, hell, it's not even that so much. You look at shows like um, The Sopranos and uh, Breaking Bad, like the protagonists of these shows are absolute pieces of subhuman trash, but you can't help <laughs> but, like, be gravitated towards them because of their charisma and the, the many layers that they have, the many emotional layers, the the humanity yeah. of them, even though you're like, why are you doing that, bro? Are you fuck? Yeah. This is the development too that they do with the characters. Yes, yes. Uh, God. And, and I'm curious because, like, because uh, they kind of made it look like that, uh, what is it, Moon Knight is separate from the MCU uh, altogether. So I'm yeah. curious how that's going to tie into future projects, which... Yeah, I, I agree. Which, which, speaking of which, you look at shit like, um... Oh, God, what you call it there? Uh, the, the Multiverse of Madness there, Doctor Strange. So much stuff, like, I mean... It, it, it was jam-packed with so many surprises, but there were so many other things that just simply were not tied into the overall, like, uh, like what they've done with the with with MCU Phase Four so far. And I feel like that's uh, that was like purposely done. You know what I mean? I feel like that was perfectly purposely done so that they can tie in all this crazy shit into not somewhat one universe. But so that they can put it out on the MCU a lot more. Mm. You know what I mean? If that makes a lot of sense. It does. Be Giving us those different types. Right. It, it, and it, it does make a little bit more sense. Here's the problem with it. People are offset by the fact that the continuity of it all is just so, like, mismatched. Because you got the Eternals there, where towards the end, you have a literal planet-sized, like, humanoid rising from the ocean depths that's not mentioned on any of the events that happened after that you got the shit that happened with loki you got the stuff that happened with actually the only thing that uh multiverse of madness tied into were the events of the very first marvel show there um uh wandavision yes yes, yes, yes. you're right you're right you're right it, it could be it could be uh i don't know it could be that just you know trying to find a way to tie it all together so bunchy, you know? Right, I mean, the only logical conclusion is that, like, each of these, if not only a select handful of these Marvel shows and uh, movies, that their world events are actually in different, um, in different dimensions and uh, universes outside of the ones, wow. like, with, uh, like, with what happened with Doctor Strange there in the latest movie. Uh, all the universes split after they uh, call TV that version of Kane. 
Yeah. So when when those things split, they created the uh, what was it called in Doctor Strange? Um, uh, Mr. Fantastic said it to him that he's called uh, the us the uh, uh, pretty much when one dimension is overlapping and another one is not supposed to do that, and it kind of causes that universe destruction. Right. Um. But if you think about it, them explaining that is is kind of the tie <laughs> from Loki and what happened with that. You know that that spread. That they caused in Loki could be the reason why things are happening the way they were they, they were happening in Multiverse of Madness, regardless of Doctor Strange and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what I mean? And that's why things are happening the way that they are happening towards the future after Doctor Strange and stuff like that. Right, right, and uh, heck, you, you noticed at the end of Multiverse of Madness, like um. It's, God, I probably should have said spoilers uh, before we even got on this subject. So uh, sorry to everyone who's came in late on all these. <laughs> That's my bad. Um, can't retcon that shit. That's for sure. But um, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, t- towards the end of Multiverse of Madness, uh, Strange had had like what is it completely destroyed all of the. Uh, basically what is their equivalent of the magical book of the dead in every yeah. conceivable uh, universe within the MCU and their multiverse that they're trying to create there, which, I mean, it helped Steven in his universe with everything, with uh, defeating Wanda, but what are the consequences from it? Because, like, going back to what you were... And it's the eye. Him, him having constantly in him now, isn't that kind of uh, somewhat of the dark side of the book still being inside of him because he had to read it for so long? That is true, yes. Going back to what you were saying about Loki there, like, I mean, especially towards the end of that series, like, the way that, um, especially killing off the uh, essentially good version of Kang, like, that had such far-reaching consequences that we have still yet to, to to view. So I imagine that this whole ordeal with destroying the magical book of the dead and all conceivable realities will have a similar uh, butterfly effect. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, we still haven't even got a season two of Loki yet, so we don't know what that's going to explain more of. But also, focusing back on Multiverse of Madness, the things that we uh, that we were just introduced to, I mean, like, I, I kind of wanted a little bit more to see, like, where else they were going to go uh, throughout. But, like, the brief bits we got, like, oh, my God, my girl Peggy Carter, oh, my God, Captain, uh-huh. Captain uh-huh. Britain, bro. <laughs> yes, 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 and the return of Patrick Stewart as Professor X. Oh my God! Yes. All of that was just beautiful to me. And, and, beautiful. And, and, and if you caught it, if you caught it, if you caught it, the version of um, Charles Xavier that they used in Multiverse of Madness was actually, I think, was a direct. Um, reference to the 90s X-Men cartoon and I was like yo what is happening because of the suit and the chair that he's in yeah 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 no it was essentially a hover car he was in yeah yeah it's, it's insane it's insane man I had oh that's just so amazing it's it, so amazing and there were other one uh like obscure references that I, I did not get like um God, what was it? Um, Black Thunderbolt there was actually uh, was actually a Marvel property before. Um, uh, before yes. b- like he was in a Marvel TV oh. show beforehand. Uh, God, I forget yes. what it was called. Me too, me too. But it was a bunch of uh, heroes as well. Yeah, yeah. And he was in that, and I think it was the same. I'm not sure if it was the same actor, but I think it was exactly the same actor too that was in that show. Yeah, and then you have the alternate reality where um, Maria Rambo from uh, the, the best friend of Carol Danvers there took on the mantle of Captain Marvel. And, yo, she looked like she was not... Ha- I mean, she was the one who lasted the longest against uh, Wanda there in that fight. That whole, that whole fight was just like, come on. For real, for... 
for real. Like, what is it? I mean, it wasn't in your face horror they were going for, but fucking a, they made they made Wanda the scariest, like, uh, the, the one of the scariest yeah. villains ever. Well, going off of that, like, okay, this is one of the first times, like. This is another first when it comes to antagonists for uh, the MCU there, because we've seen uh, the likes of Thanos and Killmonger and how much the, their pathologies uh, are relatable and almost, uh, in some cases, don't even seem all that, uh, what do you call it, um, yeah. evil. But mm -hmm. you have Wanda, who has been there since... Uh, since uh, Age of Ultron, she has been a yeah. protagonist in the series, and we have seen her evolution and her and the emotional turmoil she's been through. And to make her the antagonist of the movie, that's another gut punch that 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 emotionally, like uh, once again, Disney and Marvel Studios delivers flawlessly. Yeah, yeah, they they did it perfectly. They, they made us, well, some of, you know, they made some of us love the character and just gave it to us evil in the worst way possible, but it's in the best way possible at the same time, you know? Well, the, it, again, it goes back to the hard aspect. Because it, the, 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 the way, because like you said, with the whole Thanos and stuff and, and, and their reasoning by it, it's like she was doing it because she wanted her kids, man. You know what I mean? Well, it's... And, it's not just that, too, because remember what she said in the movies. Like, uh, she told Steven right to his face, like, you bend the rules, you're a hero. I bend the rules, I'm the villain. Well, guess what? Maybe I shouldn't hide who I am anymore. And I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, no, because that is true. Because that is true. That's very true. Because that's what she did pull some really good points when they were talking about that. That won't change. Well, I also find it funny because, what is it? we had always thought of Wanda, I mean, she was always, like, supposed to be the Scarlet Witch, but yes. we we never really took the time to notice that there was a division between the Scarlet Witch, a difference between the Scarlet Witch and Wanda, because up till now we had seen Wanda, and oh. once WandaVision hit, like, we saw like her transformation into the Scarlet Witch, but we didn't realize what kind of consequences that would have for the MCU going forward. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's true. I mean, well, in the comics and stuff, if you would be uh, in the comics and stuff, it, it did kind of happen that way. You know, what I'm saying she did end up being a very powerful, uh, evil presence in the whole MCU, the whole uh, comic and stuff. Yeah. So I, I see them doing it. I just didn't think it was going to be this soon in the way that they did it, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I kind of I kinda see it happening because, like, she was always, she's always been that cool at first, but then when she really finds her powers and realizes what she can do, she's like, well, I can fucking rule this stuff, and I'm going to. So, like, she's always been that kind of person, even in the comics. She's always been that, like, yeah, I'm going to get what I want regardless. I have the power to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right, right. And God, uh, this, and it does go back to the fact that in the in the MCU, she was the most powerful Avenger. Like, I yeah. mean, next to, I mean, you go next to uh, Thor, maybe not so much, but she definitely had the power, as we had clearly seen. She could have taken on the whole Avengers if she wanted to. She could have. Because, I mean, she took on the whole Illuminati. You could definitely, you could definitely do it. Now, are you looking forward to any of the uh, coming Marvel shows like uh, She-Hulk? Oh, did you see, um, did you see, uh, what was it, uh, Thor Love and Thunder yet? Um, I have not, and I haven't seen uh, uh, Miss Marvel. I have not either. Uh, I feel bad that I haven't been able to see either of them. Um, honestly, I feel like I'm going through Marvel fatigue at the moment just because, like, yeah. I mean, with Moon Knight and um, and uh, Multiverse of Madness alone, like, it's just been... It's just so much right now. Yeah, 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 no. It's it... an hour an episode. Yeah, it's kind of a lot. <laughs> it is a lot, but it is engaging. And what yeah. is it?
going into the deep in the real world for a moment, uh, piggybacking off of um, the themes uh, behind uh, Wanda's motivation in Multiverse of Madness there. Um, how, how are you doing with raising your daughter? Hey, man. She is growing up way too fast. Yes, yes. No, how long has it been? Like three, four years now? It's four, yeah. She's about to turn four in August. Oh, my God. Has it really been that long? Oh, my God. She is so beautiful. Now, I bring up that subject uh, because, like, especially after the um, COVID-19 lockdowns and the pandemic as a whole, we definitely saw... Right, right. We definitely saw a spike in pregnancies and single parents because, eh, you know, you get uh, you get locked uh, locked down in COVID. Uh, you need um, you need a little bit extra other than uh, cough medicine and uh, warm soup. Maybe you need something else a little bit warm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, there's definitely been a spike more in. Um, uh, pregnancies, especially in our area, the past like two and a half years. Now, as a single father in your mid twenties, what are the challenges with raising a kid in an environment in the modern day like now? Uh, it's 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 the only I feel like the the, the main difficult parts is uh learning that uh, you're you're kind of still growing yourself a lot of the young uh, parents don't realize that they're still developing and growing them, themselves so uh, they, they need to they need to have a lot more patience mm-hmm. with themselves as well and uh, understanding that these kids are learning a lot slower than you are you know what I mean so like you need to understand what you're doing yourself so that you can teach them the right way and not just teach them the bad habits that you've been constantly doing your life. You know what I mean? But it's just little stuff like that. And uh, it's not so much hard. It's just more or less, uh, uh, I don't want to use the word frustrating, but I guess, I guess impatience. You know what I mean? It, 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 you get very impatient a lot, but you just have to learn that, you know, you're, you're still growing yourself. You know, don't beat yourself up for things like that, you know? It takes time to develop that kind of uh, mindset. Right? I'm not caring myself anymore. You know? Right. What kind of uh, resources have you uh, been able to use uh, when it came to the to your daughter's development? Uh, honestly, a lot of people won't really agree, but like technology really does help a lot. You know what I mean? That, like it, it does help you to explain things if you don't know how to explain it, I guess, and, and if that makes sense, you know. A lot of people, they want to teach and they want to do that, but like I said, they have a lot of learning for themselves to do so, because they don't know how to explain certain things to teach someone. Mm-hmm. So, like, doing your own research with technology and stuff, just doing your own research to understand that mm-hmm. definitely helps a lot, you know what I mean? Because, you know, you, you can't just expect to understand what you're saying. You know what I mean? Because you're explaining it the way you've always been explaining it to adults or other people and stuff like that. So it's kind of hard to explain sometimes to children and kids the right ways and not just the, uh, the wrong ways and stuff like that. Right, right. And it's also been like, uh, you're also trying to explain it to essentially a clone of yourself and uh, also the other person yes. involved. You know, so... Yes. So it's learning, uh, it's learning that little person and how that little person does things, you know, and doing it differently yourself, not how you would do it, but how that little person is going to be comfortable with it now. Now, now you have been blessed with an absolutely loving and supportive family and, uh, absolute, and the same goes with your, uh, deep knit circle and your close friends. But if if you could think of one thing, what would be a piece of advice that you would offer to those 
who might not be as fortunate and as blessed with uh, such uh, such a strong and diverse um, uh, network and social net. Just take your time, you know. Take your time. Don't don't feed into judgment. You know, they're, they're, I guarantee you're doing fine. The baby's happy. You're happy. You're doing fine. Don't feed into judgments of people saying, "Oh, you shouldn't do this. You should do this. Oh, you shouldn't do this. You should do this." I get it. A lot of people have their own preferences with things, but don't get too overwhelmed. Pretty much, it can get overwhelming, but just take your time. Take your time. I mean, what is it? And I, I, I don't speak from, uh, obviously I don't speak from the mindset of a parent for obvious reasons, but, um, I kind of go back to, uh, that one scene from Knocked Up where, um, Seth Rogen's being chewed out for not reading the baby books and it is like, uh, he freaks out, it's like, oh yes, because, Humans for thousands of years were never able to raise a child without reading a damn baby book. And I guess where I'm applying it to this scenario too is just like there it, there are resources out there to newly and um, to newly single parents out there. I mean, there again, if you don't have friends or if you don't have family, you can absolutely talk to the Department yeah. of Social Services to get advice or there's there's seminars on uh, YouTube. I mean, I mean, you again, going back to what you were saying about technology, I'm sh- yeah. you're telling me that there's not a like YouTube like channel that gives advice on how like what resources to buy for your child, uh, how to develop a proper budget for them, and, and stuff like that. C- like, come on, we're, yeah, we're there's all that. There's all that out there. If you if you want it, you can get it. There's all of that out there. Now, especially with some of the events that have happened um, in, in the world in the past, like a uh, few years, like socially and spiritually and all that stuff. Um, do you ever have any fears and anxieties when it comes to introducing your daughter to uh, that world that we now inhabit that's ever changing and ever growing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely fear it. There's, there's just a lot going on right now, you know? And like I was saying earlier, kind of with the whole, you know, we're growing ourselves. So it's like if, if I... If I already am scared and feel like, holy shit, this is insane right now, and I'm fucking 20-something, imagine how these kids uh, with their innocent minds and have no idea what's really going on feels about stuff like that. Now you ain't lying you know? there, yeah. You know, it's a... Uh, it's, it's this little it's little things like that that I, 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 I get feared about that one now. I get feared about bringing her to school. I, I You know what I'm saying? Even when I'm out with her, I get feared that He's going to be bullied for some things, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff. The world is deep. It, it's gotten, gotten pretty bad. It's gotten pretty ugly. Yeah, I feel for, I, I fear for not even my kids. I feel for a whole bunch of, you know, kids that don't really understand what's going on and that they're trying to understand, but it's hard. It's hard to get what's, you know, hard to get what's happening. It's like really wrap your head around it. It's been crazy to say the least, but, uh, w- what I've been saying from a metaphorical uh, standpoint to better ease my own spirits is whatever unknowns this new world harbors, I mm-hmm. face with an open mind and a childlike wonder. Yeah. That's the only, yeah, that's the best way you can, yeah. honestly. Yeah. If not, you're just going to beat yourself up. Or worse, you could become like a recluse. You could be like stuck indoors, yeah. like n- not doing anything, and that's that's even worse. It is even worse. It is. It is. It is. It's best to go out there and at least try to change something. Mm-hmm. You know, if you can change something, I feel like you've done enough. Even if you can make someone smile that, that hasn't smiled, but, you know, just one little thing just to change and make things about you. That's kind of what. That's kind of what matters. I feel. That and family, of course. No, yeah, I mean, that, that's the family is what keeps you smiling too. So that's that, you know, keep all that things close, keep all that tight. 
Well, speaking of which, folks, when it comes to the challenges and tribulations of being a game streamer, a single parent, and whatever Marvel has cooking up for the future, flat out, folks, we got nothing. So I would like to thank you, Mr. Almodover, for making your way onto this lovely podcast episode. And how would you how would you like people to follow you on social media? Hey, you guys can all follow me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is Skimp Morales, S K I M P Morales. You know, you can always catch me on the Snapchat. I feel like my Snapchat is kind of always most busting. That's going to be It's the Schwan. It's the Schwan is always my name to use. And uh, everything else pretty much is the Schwan, you know? Word. YouTube, Twitch, It's the Schwan. So yeah, you guys can catch me on that. Word, word, word. And if you'd like to see what uh, your host personally provides in terms of content, please follow me at Catalyst Jost on Instagram. That is C-A-T-A-L-Y-5-T-J-0-5-T or Daniel Evans Jost on Facebook. And if you would like to see more of what Life on Saturn has cooking on future projects, please follow Life on Saturn Productions on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. And please, folks, keep your vibes dope, keep your zen flowing, and as always, peace.